Muhammad Abdi Hassan, aka Big Mouth, is one of the most notorious pirate leaders responsible for funding countless pirate attacks throughout the early 2010s. He was a pirate boss, which means he gave the Somali sailors ships and weapons to hijack foreign vessels, and he also led negotiations with foreign countries when dealing with ransoms. For each successful pirate attack, he took a 30% cut of the ransom money. In 2012, the average ransom was $2 million. Big Mouth was raking in millions. But out of all the attacks Big Mouth was responsible for, one would come back to bite him, when he orchestrated an attack on a Belgian fishing vessel in 2009. So, a basic 2000 Somali pirate attack went like this. Pirates would patrol around Somalian waters looking for foreign fishing vessels. Once they found one, they attacked by firing their weapons as they chased the boat. If a pirate successfully catches the boat, which happened around 30% of the time, they would climb on using rope ladders. And once they got on, the sailors did nothing because they had no weapons or hijacking response training before 2010. They are just sailors after all. The pirates then demand a ransom in exchange for the sailors. For the Belgian vessel, Big Mouth demanded an $8 million ransom first up. The government officials on the other side just let out a hearty laugh before realising that wasn't a joke. After 68 days of negotiation, both sides eventually settled on $2.3 million. The money which is carried in a waterproof bag is then parachuted to the pirates, who then verify the money is real or fake using their counterfeit scanners. Yeah, they have those. This is a business after all. Once satisfied, the pirates then leave the ship, and everyone moves on with their lives, just a little bit more traumatised. Big Mouth kept robbing foreign vessels up until 2012, when he decided to give up on the business, since the UN started allowing other nations' naval ships to enter Somali waters. The pirate business stopped being profitable, so he used the millions of dollars he made the years prior to bribe the Somali government into giving him diplomatic immunity, stopping other countries from trialling him for his crimes. That was until 2016, when a Belgian film director invited Big Mouth to collaborate on a movie about Somali pirates. They invited him to visit Belgium to recount his story. He flew immediately, excited to recount his tales of robbery and success. Once he landed in the airport and left the plane, he was arrested, because the filmmakers waiting for him were actually the Belgian police, who never forgot that time in 2009 when he stole $2.3 million from them. He is now in a Belgian prison, seven years into completing his 20-year sentence. Number 3. Chief Boya. Abstil Boya was just another ordinary Somali lobster diver until 1994, when the Somali communist government collapsed. The ensuing civil war meant that Somalia had no control of the seas, allowing foreign ships to start fishing in their waters. The intrusive fishing of the foreign ships with no regard to Somalia's ecosystem reduced the lobster population to zero. After losing his main source of income, Boya started fishing a different type of catch foreign sailors. Him and his friends in his tiny boat armed with some rusty AK-47s raided three foreign fishing vessels. Boya ransomed off the crewmates, showing his fellow Somali that they could make money out of this. In his free time, he was chewing some chat a narcotic leaf that is illegal in the West that practically every Somali pirate loves. Boya and his crew started calling themselves Coast Guards, defending their waters against unfair fishing vessels entering their water without pay. As leader of the Coast Guards and one of the first Somali pirates, Boya started calling himself Chief, leading the attack on several dozen foreign fishing vessels. One attack that almost ended Chief Boya's career in 2007 involved a Japanese tanker spotted 14 kilometers off the coast of Somalia. After Chief Boya and his crew chased down the tanker and boarded, the international community collectively panicked because what the pirates didn't realise was that the tanks on this ship were carrying a very dangerous compound, benzene, which is very flammable. Immediately, America sent out their destroyers to try and defend the Japanese ship and scare off the pirates, but the pirates called their bluff and didn't run away. The pirates realised that the foreign ships couldn't fire at them out of risk of the tanks exploding. They were in a standoff. Chief Boyer then started negotiating a ransom for the hostages, but the foreign military refused, hoping the pirates would run out of food and need to leave. This standoff lasted for two months until the pirates managed to get the tanker into a Somali port. Now that the pirates had plenty of food, they managed to successfully negotiate a $1.5 million ransom for the ship's crew, which was then parachuted to their boats before they left. Boya and his crew grew to over 500 at its peak. The business was so lucrative that other towns started participating in the piracy. It was only until the Muslim sheiks of the country declared doing business with pirates haram that Boya decided to slow down his hijackings in 2009. And of course, the UN allowing foreign countries' navy into Somalia that same year might have helped as well. The next year, Boya was driving in Puntland, one of the regions 
friends in Somalia before getting arrested by police. In his car was two pistols and $29,000 in cash. The Puntland government was doing a raid on 11 other pirates that same day to fend off international accusations that the government was accepting bribes from the pirates to look the other way when they robbed ships. Boyer was then sentenced to five years in prison for his crimes. Number two, the smiling pirate. A teenage boy from Galkayo, Somalia was bragging to his friends about how he was going to become a great pirate in the future, to steal back from the foreign countries that steal from them. After he graduated, he led multiple pirate attacks, but the one that he is most known for was a 2009 attack on an American ship, the Mayusk, Alabama. This teenage boy's name was Abduwali Musa. Him and three other teenagers chased the Mayusk, Alabama after they discovered it entering Somali waters. The ship was transporting food and aid which was intended for other Somalians as well as immigrants who were fleeing wars. Once the American ship noticed the crew, the sailors initiated their anti-pirate measures which they had been trained in by this point throwing flares at the pirates and turning on hoses at the side of their ship. This was done to keep the boats away because they didn't want to get filled with water and sink. However, the pirates got past the water and entered the ship anyway. Some members of the crew evacuated to a pre-planned safe room. Meanwhile, others stayed back to turn off the ship's power, stopping the pirates from being able to take control of the ship and also leaving them stranded in the ocean. Musa's crew captured Richard Phillips, who was the captain of the American ship, as well as some other American sailors, but Musa himself was stabbed in the hand in the process. The sailors Sailors tried to negotiate with Musa, explaining that the ship was transporting containers of food aid that was intended for Somali people and refugees. The pirates didn't care, because they realised the ship was American, which meant they could charge a lot of money for ransom. After hearing a distress signal, the US sent their Navy SEALs and the FBI on one of their destroyers towards the Mayosk, Alabama. Scared and injured, the pirates got into a lifeboat with Captain Phillips as a hostage while they tried to escape to Somalia's land. After some negotiations with the FBI, the pirates exchanged Musa as a hostage to get him treated for the arm injury he got. Once negotiations broke down, Navy SEAL snipers waited for their chance and successfully shot the three remaining pirates through the windows of the lifeboat, saving Captain Phillips in the process. Musa was then sent to the US to face the charges of piracy. After landing, he was greeted by thousands of media and journalists who were watching the entire situation play out, and seeing how famous he became, he smiled, giving him the nickname of the Smiling Pirate. However, once in court, he realised he was screwed if he was tried as an adult so he said he was 16 years old. But the FBI agents that transported him didn't believe him, so they went to his hometown and asked some of his former classmates. The same classmates he bragged about becoming a pirate to back in school. The classmates confirmed that he was over the age of 18. Musa was then sentenced to 33 years in prison, which he is still doing today. Number 1. The Moscow University Hijacking In 2010, a crew of 11 pirates hijacked a Russian cargo ship which was moving over $50 million worth of oil. The sailors, who were getting used to pirate attacks at this point, followed evacuation procedures and successfully locked themselves in a safe room. The pirates got annoyed and started shooting at the safe room walls, but nobody was calling their bluffs. Eventually, a Russian destroyer arrived to defend the victims, sending in attack helicopters and navy officers at night. The pirates had two choices, either try to escape because they had no hostages and were about to be attacked, or surrender and hope for a smaller punishment. They picked option three, shoot at the attack helicopters. The Russian navy then fired their cannons and the marines boarded the ships starting a firefight. Since the marines had more weapons, cover fire from the attack helicopters, and several years of training and battle experience, they obviously won, killing one of the pirates and injuring two more before the pirates surrendered. After the pirates were arrested, the Russian navy found there was an issue. If they sent the Somali pirates into Russia, they couldn't be tried. Since they never actually took a hostage, because of a legal loophole, what the pirates were doing wasn't necessarily illegal. So after some deliberation, the Russians released the pirates giving them an inflatable boat, some food, and fuel. After about an hour, the signal of the pirate's boat disappeared from the Russian ship's radar, and the pirates were never heard from again. If you liked this video, please subscribe. Thanks for watching until the end. Okay, bye.